Hey, what's up guys? So Uniden just released a brand new firmware update for the R1 and the R3 radar detectors. Uh, this new firmware update is version 1.30. Now this new firmware update adds a whole bunch of brand new features to the detector. Actually the features that you guys have been requesting the most. Uh, it also fixes some of the most annoying bugs with the detector. Uh, in order to download this update, I'll put the link down in the video description. Uh, but in this video, I wanna cover all the different updates that this new firmware update brings. So starting us off, uh, the first thing that we're gonna be talking about is uh, the fix for the K to KA band ghosting, and vice versa. As you guys know, if you were running the detector in KA wide instead of KA narrow, it would have a tendency to ghost, where if you would see a bunch of K-band signals, for example, it may actually report it as KA band. Same thing with if you have a KA band signal, it may actually report it as K band. Uh, I used to be able to reproduce this issue almost instantly within a couple seconds. I could just sit in front of a door opener and it would happen. I tried it the other day for 20 minutes straight, not a single ghost alert, which was awesome. The only thing that I was able to do was I turned on another detector nearby and that triggered a false alert in the Uniden, but other than that, as far as ghosting, I have not been able to reproduce the issue yet, and so while I can't say it's been totally fixed, it is definitely a tremendous improvement over what we had before. So for those of you guys who wanna go ahead and run KA wide, now you're gonna be able to do that without fear of ghosting. Additionally, speaking of K and KA band alerts, we now have band priority alerts. Before, the detector actually had signal strength priority alerts where the strongest signal, the one that you were closest to, maybe a blind spot car next to you or something, would be the one that the detector is actually going to be alerting to primarily. Uh, if there's maybe a weak KA band signal in the distance because it's weaker, the detector would not be telling you. Now you actually have band priority alerts where it's going to alert to laser as the top priority, then KA, K-band and X-band in that order. When you take a look in the detector, you'll see a new option now for KA priority. That's the feature that's available now, which is band priority for the R1 and the R3. Additionally, the GPS lockouts have been improved. Uh, they used to actually cover a width of plus minus 50 megahertz. That was pretty wide because it was quite likely that you could actually lock out a police officer who's nearby. Now they've actually reduced the range from plus minus 50 megahertz to only 30. So the detector is now gonna be much safer and much less likely to inadvertently lock out a police officer. Now something that you guys will probably notice is when you start driving around, uh, false alerts that you've previously locked out before may actually start alerting again. And the reason this happens is you may have actually had one lockout covering multiple false alert signals. And now if uh, the lockout has become narrower, one of the signals that used to be locked out no longer is, and now you're gonna get an alert. So be aware of that, that could happen, and you'll just need to go in and double press the mute button again and create a new lockout uh, for this additional signal. Uh, another thing that's been fixed is the lockouts no longer affect KA band. Uh, they weren't supposed to by design, but it was a bug where they used to. Uh, now the lockouts do not affect KA band anymore. Uh, now there's also an improvement to the red light camera alerts. Uh, if you're driving uh, past a red light camera alert and you don't actually want to get notified to that red light camera, maybe you're you know driving up the highway, for example, and there's a red light camera on a nearby surface street, we used to have uh, one thing to, do, to deal with it, which was the uh, red light camera quiet ride, which is basically high speed muting. Above a certain speed, it will mute out red light camera alerts. We now actually have the option to individually delete a particular red light camera or speed camera alert. The way that it works is when that alert pops up, you just double press the mute button and then it will go ahead and delete that particular red light camera alert so it doesn't notify you again in the future. Now we also have brand new alert tones. So for those of you guys who didn't like the alert tones that we have before, you now have 12 different alert tones to choose from, which you can assign to X-band, K-band, K-A-band, or laser. As far as the sensitivity options, uh, we used to have highway, city, and city two mode. City two is now gone. City two has actually been replaced by what they're calling advanced mode. And advanced mode is gonna allow us to individually dial back the sensitivity of any band we want from 100% sensitivity all the way down to 30% sensitivity in 10% increments. So for uh, people who are reporting, hey, my detector's too sensitive, I'm getting too much range, especially on K-band, for example, maybe you'd wanna dial back the sensitivity. We now have granular control over how far back the detector dials back the sensitivity on X-band, K-band, or on K-A-band. 
there's now a new display option as well, uh, which can display whether you're displaying a highway, city, or advanced mode on screen. This is really nice because with the R1, the only option before was that scanning heartbeat scanner. Uh, the R3 had an additional option to display the time on screen, but not everybody wanted that. So there's now a new option that's available on both detectors where you can display which sensitivity mode that you're currently selected. Also for the display, on the right side of the screen, there's a little box that will tell you what mode you're in. Uh, that used to be a different color than whatever display you had. Uh, now that box has been changed so that the display color of the sensitivity box is actually going to be matching whatever display color blue, green, red, etc. you've got selected with your detector. There's also been a fix for the altimeter. Uh, before, the altimeter was actually capped at four digits, and so if you drove over 10,000 feet, uh, it would just cap out at 9999 and wouldn't be able to go any higher. Uh, they've since fixed that and made it able to display up to five digits, so as long as you're not driving over 100,000 feet in elevation, your altimeter should now work perfectly. Finally, there's been an improvement to the auto mute functionality. For those of you guys who use the auto mute functionality and you like the fact that after three seconds the detector alerts from full volume down to reduced volume, if you found that the reduced volume level is actually too quiet and you'd like to be able to hear it better, we now have selectable auto mute level. So you can now choose not only the main volume of your detector's alerts, you can also choose now the auto mute volume level and how quiet or loud the detector drops your volume down to. So as you can see, we've got a lot of really cool updates to this detector, uh, both new features that have been introduced as well as some fixes to some of the most annoying issues. Now, in order to update your detector, you're going to want to go to Uniden's website. The link is down in the video description, and there's two things that you're going to want to download. One is going to be the firmware update itself. The second thing is going to be an updated voice pack, which is going to add all these new alert tones uh, that are available for your detectors. Again, link is down in the video description to where you can download them, or if you need to purchase either one of these detectors, you'll find the links down there for that as well. So anyways, let me know if you have any question. Thanks so much for watching and good job Uniden. Thank you so much for actually listening to us and implementing these features that we've been wanting uh, and also doing it so quickly. That's really cool. So a big, big thank you to Uniden. Um, other than that, that's it. Go ahead and update. Again, it's firmware version 1.30 and this looks like it's a pretty good one. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.